okay? Let's understand about ratios, meanings, and properties. Now, this term ratio, we come across very often in our lives, okay? Whatever you might be doing. So let's say your mother is preparing tea, okay? And we all know that tea is prepared by using milk and water, okay? So let's say in order to prepare three cups of teas, you require normally two cups of water and one cup of milk, right? Now this ratio term which is used basically is used to denote, let me just write it down, denote one quantity in comparison to other quantity or quantities. We'll see what I mean by this. Now, when we use the milk and the water to prepare tea, we say that for every three cups of teas, for every three cup of teas, the ratio of water to milk required is two cup is to one cup or simply two is to one. Now basically what we mean when we say the ratio of milk required is that you know the relevant proportion of one quantity which is that of water which is required vis-a-vis -vis another quantity. So the purpose of ratio basically is to ensure or to reflect how much of one is needed vis-a-vis -vis other under given circumstances. Okay? So in this case basically the ratio of 2 is to 1 denotes that for every 2 cup of water we require 1 cup of milk to produce 3 cups of tea. Now this ratio which is 2 is to 1 can also be written as if you multiply both of them by 2 you will get 4 is to 2. Right? Or again if you multiply with them by 3 you will get 12 is to 6. But in both the cases the ratio remains the same. Meaning thereby that if you divide one of them from the other ultimately you are going to reach at 2 is to 1. Right? So when you say the ratio of water to milk you write it as 2 is to 1. Whereas if you were to write it like milk to water you would write 1 is to 2. Right? Now there are certain things when you compute the ratios which are important. The first thing is that the comparison has to be of same units. What does this mean? Now in this case what I am comparing is two cups of water with two cups of milk. I cannot compare two glasses of water with two cups of milk. No, that will be incorrect. The unit of both the quantities or both the terms or both the aspects that are compared has to be the same. If they are not same, then you have to kind of convert them into equivalent thing. So let's say if you were to compare two hours with 30 minutes, this is not correct. You have to first convert these hours into minutes. So two hours can be written as 120 minutes and then these can be compared with 30 minutes and then the comparison or the ratio of these two times will be fine. Similarly, you cannot compare kilometers with meters. You have to convert the kilometers by multiplying them by thousand and converting them into equivalent meter 
and then compare. So the unit has to be the same. You cannot have different units while you are comparing the ratios. Okay? Now, a ratio, basically, once it reaches a stage, now if you notice, I told you that 2 is to 1 is the same thing as 4 is to 2, is the same thing as 12 is to 6. Right? Now, in cases where the HCF of two ratios is 1, then we say that the ratio are expressed in their simplest forms. So it cannot be reduced any further, right? So let's say, for example, let's take one small example over here. Let's say you were given 21 upon 35, right? Now, if you notice, 21 upon 35, is it something which is there in the simplest form? No. Why? Let's see. So we find out the HCF of 25, 21 and 35 by division method. 21 into 1 will give you 21. 5 minus 1 gives you 4. 3 minus 2 gives you 1. The remainder is not 0. So we get this and make this as the dividend. 1, 14. 21 minus 14 will give you 7. So now 14 becomes the dividend. 14, 2 times 14. So the HCF of these two numbers is 7. Hence, we conclude that this is not a ratio in the simplest form. So what do we do? We divide both the numbers, both the numerators and the denominators by 7. 21 divided by 7 is 3. 35 divided by 7 is 5. Right? Now in this case, if you notice, we have received or rather we have reached a situation where the number which is there is 3 upon 5. Should we find out the HCF of 5 and 3? So 3 times 3, 1 gives you 3. 5 minus 3 gives you 2. We get 3 here. 1, 2, 1, 2, 2. Hence the HCF is 1. So given that the HCF is 1, we say that the ratio has been expressed in its simplest form. Okay? Similarly, let me take another example. I think, you know, probably we can take another example over here. Let us say in a class of 10th, there are 60 students. Okay? And out of these 60 students, 36 are boys. And balance are girls. So suppose I were to ask you, what is the ratio of boys and girls? Now out of 60 students, the boys are 36. Hence, the girls are how many? 60 minus 36 or 24. Right? So if I were to ask you the ratio of boys to girls, what do you write? You say the ratio is 36 is to 60. Okay? Now what does this mean? This means that for total number, sorry, it's not 60. This is 24. Right? Or, if you were to reduce this into the simplest form, we can also write this as 36 divided by 24. Let's divide both the numbers by 4. So 36 divided by 4 will give you 9. 24 divided by 4 will give you 6. Or, you can actually, instead of 4, you can also divide them by 12. 
So 36 divided by 12 will give you 3. 24 divided by 12 will give you 2. So 36 is to 4 can also be written as 3 is to 2. Now first let us understand what does this 3 is to 2 denote. This 3 is to 2 denotes that the ratio of boys and girls is 3 is to 2. Or for every 3 boys there are 2 girls in the classroom okay which is classroom 10th right so this basically helps in various things so let's say you know you are trying to find out that the okay let me tell you how this helps so suppose you were aware that you know the boys like to play with the cricket balls and the girls like to play with badminton okay I'm not being biased but I'm just taking this as an example now in that case suppose you have to make an estimate of how what is the ratio of balls that should be brought in the classroom vis-a-vis -vis the badminton so generally you can say that given that the ratio of boys and girls is 3 is to 2 the number of ratio of balls to badminton should also be 3 is to 2. Right? So you can decide as to how many balls you want per boy or how many badmintons you want per girl. But generally the ratio is 3 is to 2. So in taking decisions where we decide as to what all quantities are required, the ratios are useful. Okay? Now we will see some various examples of ratios and proportion in the context in which they are particularly used.